Hi, we're so excited. February 4th, right around the corner, 8.30 p.m. on Dominion TV. You need to connect with Sandry and friends. And we're so excited. Our first two uh, shows will be with my friend, the one and only Dr. So Loretta excited. Pierce. You must connect, right, Loretta? So excited. Yes, yes. And they'll be able to see if God can use a cookie to change my life. Oh, my God, baby. He can do anything. There's no secret to what God can do. What he's done for Loretta, he'll do for you. Watch us. This is Sandry and Frizz, laser focus now. Welcome to Sandry and Friends. Wow, I'm so excited. I have a very special friend here with me this morning. And you know, it's Martin Luther King's it day. Is. It is. And none other than Dr. Loretta Pierce. Isn't it awesome to be here today? It is, and thank you for it's inviting me. mean Yay. celebration <laughs> for me. It's our first, first program on a very special day with a very oh, special friend. Loretta, so Loretta, Loretta. Isn't it awesome? It's awesome. And this is awesome. It's beautiful Isn't here. it beautiful? So yes. here we are at Dominion TV Network, believing, believing that great things are in store. And I couldn't mm. think of a better person to be here with us and, and to have that first conversation of what's happening. Uh, my life has been so impacted and I couldn't think of a person that could not only connect to the vision, walk the vision, talk the vision, but on top of that, Martin Luther King's Day. Yeah. When, when we say that, well, what, what do you feel? What did you think? What do you hear? Let me tell you, not rehearse, because, of course, you know, um, we just were talking about it being his day. But when you said that, the very first thing that came to my mind was, well, two things. One was I was honored to receive a Martin Luther King Award which is just unheard of for me. Um, so what an honor for that to be, um, along with his own daughter, Dr. Bernice King. I was presented an award for philanthropy. But the other thing was the I Have a Dream speech, but not the speech per se, but the very fact that he talked about he had a dream. And when I think about my own life, I knew that I did not have dreams. Wow, so when this It's powerful. So when you said it that, is. it came it to my mind. It did. It, it connects. Did. I it love did. hearing you say Martin Luther King. Well, I, I, as a Puerto Rican Italian, <laughs> born in the United States of America, New Yorker, New Yorker, <laughs> I'll say I got the Rosa Parks Award. And wow, that was so exciting. But wow. the Martin Luther King Award, there's something yeah. about it. Now, how do you connect that to when you started to dream? Um, actually, I, can I, can I really be honest with you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I get, you know, you've known me a while now, so I get teary and misty when I, when I really think about my life. I don't know that, well, Sam, I don't know that I ever did dream. I often say that like, even my life today, I'm not living my dream. I'm living God's dream for my life. Wow. So I, I feel, oh my gosh. So I don't, maybe now I would say I dream a little. And then I'm real careful about that because I don't know that I even have to dream because it's been like an explosion of favor. Mm. Um, but um, so let's go to the beginning of that. What did you oh. go through and how did you wake up to this favor? When did you identify that favor? So... I guess going from the very beginning would be childhood, growing up in a small town in southern Jersey. Um, at at and it, it's kind of kind of dark, but it gets better. And so, at uh, as a young girl at thirteen, 
going through molestation. 14, I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. 16, I commit, tried to attempt a suicide. Um, by 18, looking for love in all the wrong places. Um, dropped out of school, wound up pregnant. By 24, four amazing children who are four amazing are today. Beautiful. I love them. Oh, my God. They're like family. I guess that's favor. Yes. And so, uh, you know, still, and, and just always um, living a life of feeling like a failure. Mm -hmm. um, someone said to me once, uh, when, do you, when did you realize that you were a success or a successful? And, and the word success didn't resonate with me. And I remember, you know, I'm a jokester. I remember saying, wow, the only time I think about success is a box of rice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I never, I never connected. I never connected that with my life. So, you know, going through those channels of darkness and now it's so okay because I meet thousands and, and, and hear from millions of people, women and men who kind of have been through that dark, that, that dark time. So anyway, going through all that and working two or three jobs and and um and 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 being connected to someone who was um a, a pretty bad choice. Uh and 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 the gentleman, my ex at that time was very, very, very abusive. And I felt that I had already been such a failure and I didn't want to go to my mom and dad crying out, you know, please help me. I'm going through all this abuse. And so I just kept think. I think believing is going to get better or I'm going to get out either or. And, um, and eventually just the day before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Eve, he attempted my life. And um, so this was back in like, what year do you recall? This was in the late eighties, the late eighties in New Jersey, because after I recovered after a year of, um, my face being, being, my face being ripped apart and being paralyzed for a year, I packed up like the Beverly Hillbillies. Okay, okay it's a good show. <laughs> <laughs> and we do the Beverly. Bags, your hat, and here we go. Huh? My children had $35 a U-Haul with old furniture, Oof. and I left Jersey en route to South Carolina. And I wound up in a small town, South Carolina. And, and then by that time I was married. Uh, to a uh, person that wasn't good for me either. And, um, and the story kind of even got worse, you know, from the marriage, it, it, it crumbled and uh, we wound up being divorced. My daughter now at 23 has a brain tumor and goes blind. Mm -hmm. So it's just spirals and spirals and spirals of bad news. I was like the bad news bear, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to be my friend back then because it was, oh, so there's a hard, um, it, there's a hard time thinking that, that at any point during the course of all that, I had time to dream. I didn't have time to dream, I guess. So you were, were just existing and going through the process of life. Absolutely, yeah. I think, and, and you know what so many people are now, even in this pandemic and in some areas recession, a lot of people aren't dreaming. They're not dreaming like it's going to get better, I'm going to you know, be in a new house or I'm going to uh, get a good job. They're not, they're just existing. You know, how am I going to get from, from the area that I'm in now to the area that I, I would hope to be, or, you know, and the loss and loss and loss. And so, yeah, dream, uh, dream was never a thought, you know, I guess dreams were for other people. Um, but God. But God. So how do you go from, I hear all, all this, painful, yeah. painful uh, process that in, it became gainful. You go from pain, how did you become the cookie lady? I think at one point, I, I, when I look back now, because it was just life then, so it's like looking at someone else's life, one thing I can say was I never had a pity party. Mm. I never, I never looked at myself as a victim, even in the domestic violence, even when, you know, electric was being disconnected and water was being turned mm. off and cars were being repoed. And I never looked at myself as a why me. I just kept going and going and going and finding another job. So in the finding midst another of pain, job. you were driven. I was driven, but I was never focused on God. I thought that I could do it. I thought that I would be able to 
put my kids through college. I thought that I would be able to get all the bills. I just kept thinking that if I get one more job, if I get three and four, I mean, getting hardly any sleep, if I can get one more job. And um, actually, my, my turning point literally was one day, it's, this is really a touching story, but just driving. Just, I had totally blocked God out of my life. I don't mm. think that I even believed that there could be a God that loved me. I didn't want to hear about God. I don't care what anybody said. You know, my mother was a pastor. I had no desire whatsoever to hear anybody spill about, let's pray about it, you know. And um, one day just driving on secular radio, Kurt Franklin's song came on. Mm. I didn't know who he was. And... Um, and the words were, someone asked a question, why do we sing when we lift our hands to Jesus? Someone what do we really? Ah, so that's it. And, and actually, I'm thinking, why is this song, lift our hands to Jesus? Why is this song on the radio? You know, I'm thinking. But he kept going. And it got to the point where I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. And all I could remember was wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Pulling the car over. And laying on the steering wheel and screaming because two words resonated, happy and free. Mm. And I was neither one. And I remember not believing in God, but saying, you know, if you're real, and if this is the whole encounter I'm experiencing is real, and if you want me, mm. I'm here. And that's how I gave my life to the Lord. Just no, I confess I'm a sinner. It was too much to confess, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Too much of life. Oh, oh my God. I believe in my heart. I don't even know what I, I didn't even know about. But I just was like, if you really, really like even have the time for me. And it wasn't because I had hit a brick wall. It wasn't because I didn't have enough jobs. It wasn't because I didn't think I could do it. It was just because I realized I wasn't happy. And I told, definitely wasn't free. And so uh, after that, I, you know, I'm, I'm now saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have God in your life. And what unfolds? The unexpected happened. The very how did it happen? Because I, I I started to hear that the cookie lady now started blessing the homeless. How did that? Well, well, what happened was, of course, I didn't know anything about the Lord, and I wasn't. I was too ashamed. It was really kind of funny to tell anybody that, hey, I've given my life to the Lord because I just. It was oblivious. I was oblivious to it, like you know. So I got all these books at thrift stores and yard sales, anything that said eh, eh, "Good Morning Holy Spirit." And I thought, "Oh, that's a good book. Let me read about it, find about." And so I started hungering for God and just reading His Word and reading His Word and reading His Word. And during that time, my daughter had went blind with a brain tumor, and and I knew that I had been through all this other stuff, but something about my daughter Joy. Looking at her being blind, going to a cancer center, and her saying to me, I'm dying, mommy. Looking at that, it was the epitome of, this is it. If you are God. I remember, I remember that prayer so well. If you are God. I mean, everything else is okay. But I need my daughter healed. And eventually, watching, watching the Lord heal my daughter through total blindness, once she was healed... Uh, I knew that there was nothing that God could do. And so I, she wound up going to Georgia State. I moved to Georgia. I had lost everything in the Carolinas. And I vowed to just make God happy. I, I felt that he had blessed me so much. He had given me so much, an old raggedy truck, and I had an old little piece of an apartment, and I just got a job making 13 bucks an hour. And I was like, man, I am a baller. I'm the richest thing here in Atlanta. You know, I am blessed. And I just want to make you proud. I want to I want to bless you back. And so I begin to do all kinds of things. I told you the story about me joining the choir and mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> hired and fired. No. Hired and fired. Yeah. They <laughs> telling me I couldn't sing. And um so then I started volunteering at women's homeless shelters and um and then literally one morning, I mean one what well let's do one morning. I call it my ordinary day experience. I get up and I um I have some yogurt. I go to work. By 12 o'clock that afternoon at lunch, I was like, oh, Lord, I need a word from you. Threw a book down, and I heard, I know it was the voice of the Lord say, so does everyone else, word of God in a cookie. And that took me on a journey of 
fortune cookies with God's word in them. Wow. So we'll be right back to continue <laughs> with this journey about that cookie. Hi, this is Sandry with Sandry and Friends. I want you to follow me, connect with me, keep me posted. We got to keep this conversation going, flowing. So connect social media through email, website, whatever. I want to hear from you. Love you. Hi, I want you to watch me on Dominion TV, Sandry and Friends. Time and day is below. This is Sandry and Friends, laser focus now. So we continue our journey. So what is in your hand? So what is in your hand? Like Moses, uh, what is in your hand? And Moses, remember in the Bible, he only had a couple things going for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he, you know, he had a stutter and a stick. A stutter and a stick, <laughs> Lord Jesus. But he did it. And so with me, I had dyslexia. Mm. <laughs> so because of the dyslexia, I just wrote Bible verses to try to remember them. And so when I when I remember throwing the book down and saying, uh, I had a magazine in my hand, I threw it down and I said, oh, Lord, I need a word from you because I hadn't brought my Bible. I didn't bring anything inspirational. And I heard, so does everyone else, word of God in a cookie. So I thought, where did that come from? And I picked the magazine back up and I'm fumbling through the pages. There's a giant fortune cookie in the book and I'm just staring at it. And all of a sudden, the same scriptures that I had been writing now kind of transformed. And I'm looking at, I can do all things through Christ and greater is he that is, and on and on and on. And, um, and the amazing thing about the Lord is when he gives you something, he will, what do they say when he brings you to it? He'll bring you through it. Absolutely. Okay. And so I'm thinking, where do I go with this? You know, Lord, you want me to make cookies and write scriptures and stuff them? And I thought that that's what the plan was because uh -uh. I just wanted to bless people because I was so blessed. Remember, $13 an hour job. What? And, what? <laughs> <laughs> little truck. I was like, oh my God, I want everybody to be blessed like me. More than $200 a week. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that you said that, I went from, and this is truth, a $200 unemployment check mm -hmm. to my very first contract with my company for $2 million. Well, did from you hear that? From a two hundred dollar check to a two, two million dollar. Yes, but it can right. I say this? That I turned down. Ooh, and then what happened? And then I turned it down. And then uh, my children thought I was crazy, and uh, so does everyone. So did everyone else. I would have thought and, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I kept praying, praying and trusting God. Uh, things weren't right with the person that all wanted to partner with me, and um, before I knew it. Through dreams, through dreams, the Lord would direct me and tell me, do this, do that. And I'd get up in the morning, I'd write down the dream, and, and then I would do exactly what I would hear in my spirit. And the next thing I know, I'm, I wind up on Ponce de Leon to this very day at a place called Dang Sing Noodle Company, which is a fortune mm -hmm. cookie factory. And I, I meet with the owner there, and I'm like, I, I would like to have fortune cookies. And she's saying, yes, yes. She doesn't understand English very well. And I said, with um, my own messages. And I'm, she said, okay, okay. And I'm thinking, whoa, we got that one. And I said, but I don't, I don't have any money. <laughs> it's a done deal with no money. <laughs> and she said, okay, okay, okay. That's a lot of okay. faith. <laughs> oh, my God. But you know what? I remember... I re so it was cash on demand. I would take my paycheck and whatever was left, I knew what I had to pay. And I remember the first shipment, Sandry, the first shipment. Mm. I remember getting in that old truck, having it packed <laughs> with big boxes of cookies. And I went down the street to a gas station. I cut it open with my key and I just grabbed the cookie. And that was First Peter and it said, there is wonderful joy ahead. Woo. And it has been an amazing joy, joy, joy. joy. Amazing journey. Mm -hmm. So I'm from 200 to 2, two million, million to turned down to? To, doing, to coming home one day, and we had answer machines back then in Atlanta. Somebody says, beep. I remember oh. that answering goes, machine. Beep. Oh, we're looking for this crazy lady. <laughs> I say crazy. <laughs> that they called, they were looking for this cookie lady that was called in Atlanta because by that time it was year number three, and everybody knew me as, hey, cookie lady, you have any cookies? I would just give them away. Uh, but it was something about God's word in them that people remembered the verses and they would tell me what the word said. Back. And I would, I would just be so happy riding around my truck, giving away cookies. And um, the company said, we are having 
um, Atlanta's most unique business they were looking in and and I was chosen and I thought I don't have a business what are you talking about and so I I dialogued with what Covenant Cookies was at that time they were just fortune cookies had them dipped in chocolate so they went from fortune cookies to Plain becoming cookies the Covenant to cookies. gourmet fortune cookies Covenant cookies Covenant word of God you know never returns void a bond and in front of about five to 7,000 people in Atlanta, I was recognized as Atlanta's most unique business in 2005. From there, from there, it was like boom, 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 mm. lights, camera, action, and people were calling lights, from camera, all over. Lights, camera, action, favor. TV, favor, favor, favor. And then I get a call uh, from his well-known uh, Hall of Famer, uh, Pastor Dale Strawberry, his uh, business manager, uh, John Lupo out of uh, Lupo Enterprises, New York, New York calls yeah. and says, hey, we're looking for this cookie lady. All Stars for Charity, so it was All Stars for Charity, were looking for a product to put in their boxes. And someone mentioned the cookies. And so then they met with me. And, and then from there, I wound up with business partners and a factory in California and QVC and and six languages. Mm -hmm. So we went from... Do you have another one in Atlanta? Atlanta. That's right. California. Mm -hmm. And a bakery in the Carolinas. But God. And now coffee. And coffee. And, and your candles. And candles. And popcorn. Listen. And the coffee. I, the coffee Ooh. is Omega Roast, Yahweh Blend, Jehovah, Java, and Elohim Delight. Yeah. And so it, it keeps going on and on and on. He has blessed you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's amazing, though, because when I asked you at the beginning about vision, you, you didn't dream and you didn't have a vision, but you were driven. I you was were hungry driven. and you were on a search. You just didn't know which way to go. I, but you made the right choice. I think my, the right choice was Jesus. Uh -huh. I, I remember saying that I, was hit, I hit rock bottom in my life. I was rock bottom for so long, but I never realized that, that the rock was a solid rock. Ooh. I was on the rock. Oh, my mm. gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and you so, landed on the solid rock. Never failed me. No, never, never, never. What's that song? When all around me is sinking, sinking sand on Christ, the solid rock, rock I stand. I stand. <laughs> mm. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to, to the, the rock. rock. We got to sing it like the Pentecostal. What? Sing. I go to the rock, go my salvation. <laughs> And celebrate life. I just love the fact, you know what, Loretta? It doesn't matter what platforms we stand on. At what you, you remain so humble, so down to earth. Here we sit today, but I know you to spend, and I'm going to go there. I'm going there. <laughs> you could be with the NBA. You could be with uh, Oprah Winfrey on a personal. The cookie lady delivers to Oprah Winfrey cookies. But listen, not mm -hmm. only that, and you're a friend. Yeah. But you represent who? Jesus. Jesus. No matter where you're at. Yeah, my daughter says it well. She says, it's not your story. It's his ooh, story. Ooh. It's his story. And yeah, it doesn't give you chills. It, it does. It does because yeah. I think what a platform that we can share that no matter what or where we go or what we do or who we're with, our light shines. No matter where we enter, he arrives before us. I think one of the greatest... Um, moments in my life like that light bulb when mm -hmm. you were talking about people was when I lived in Atlanta um, and I got a call from North Point Church which is Pastor Andy Stanley mm -hmm. and on Monday nights Pastor Charles Stanley and Andy all the family get together and they said we would like to have your cookies for dinner and here I am just a year before that you know blessed to be to be reading Pastor Charleston, I just hungered, you know, and reading his book, and to think that in a in a little bit of time, like with God, there is no, um, you know, that the, the scripture that says the first shall be last, and the last shall be mm -hmm, first. Mm -hmm. But there is no time with Him. He restores years, mm. and when He restores them, He takes you straight to the top. You know what I mean? So one minute I'm reading a book that I that I was blessed to even get. I um. I thought about a, a time when I was uh, in Spartanburg, South Carolina at an Ingalls store and I had 10 bucks to my name, Sandy. 
And and that particular day, I'll never forget this. There's so many, but that particular day, and you've never heard this one. Um, I was standing in line, and I, you know, I love decorating, mm -hmm. so that's why this is so she beautiful loves in here. Decorating. And and so I was looking at like the decorating magazine. This color here reminds me of one of your dining rooms, yeah. right? Yeah. Blue. Uh, so I'm looking through the book, and the line is getting shorter and shorter. And they're like, "Go ahead," and I said, "No, go ahead." And the reason was because I wanted to finish all the pages in that book, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think I bought like a pack of hamburger, maybe some rice, maybe some peas or whatever. The ten bucks I I had calculator it. I'm walking out of the store with my with my grocery bag and I hear this how the enemy will talk to you. Look at you. You're so broke. You can't even afford to buy a magazine, a simple little magazine. And you know, all this doubt starts and I'm just looking, I'm thinking ten dollars. I just stretched ten dollars. Let me tell you something. The day I graced the cover of that magazine, mm. how about mm. that? Mm. Oh, my God. And I remember saying, I remember I couldn't even afford to buy it and to be on covers. I remember going through the airport, standing in a, in a little shop, getting sodas or whatever, and looking at a magazine and knew Sister to Sister was a magazine. And the caption was, who does she think she is? <laughs> and I'm looking and I'm thinking, that's me. That is me. And so that's the, that's the majesty of God. And the thing that I, I guess I'm trying to say is, too, I, I did a conference, excuse the tears. I did, but it just reminds me. Keeping it just real. reminds me. I did a conference the, in the Keller. The tears yes. of joy of his greatness. It's, it's, it's just an awe. Mm -hmm. I'm still in awe. Like last night I said, I pinched myself. But I was um, in California, and the Lord spoke to me and said, today their names will change. And I thought... Well, everybody else's name is going to change, but what about my name? And I heard the Lord say, I will make your name great. And I looked up, and the banner said, the cookie lady. Wow. <laughs> he will make your name great. With a cookie. What? A cookie. Stay connected. You know what? He will make your name great. We'll be right back. This is Hi, this is Sandry with Sandry and Friends. I want you to follow me, connect with me, keep me posted. We got to keep this conversation going, flowing. So connect, social media, through email, website, whatever. I want to hear from you. Love you. Hi, I want you to watch me on Dominion TV, Sandry and Friends. Time and day is below. Make sure you connect with us next week again, part two with Dr. Loretta Pierce, Sandry and Friends. Hi, this is Sandry with Sandry and Friends. I want you to follow me, connect with me, keep me posted. We got to keep this conversation going, flowing. So connect, social media, through email, website, whatever. I want to hear from you. Love you.